Hey, we're here at the uh, Rates BMX Show corporate office. This is Josh, the Ride Out Culture Exchange Show. Uh, we will today be interviewing the question, what 26s and 29s are available to us out there in the world? Uh, the scene that I'm on, that's mostly what we ride. There are some 20s and 24s out there, no denying, but that list would be every bike company that there is. So let's talk about it. Vendetta. This bike has some major appeal to me. It's one of the very few big bikes that has the 90s vibe as opposed to the 80s vibe. Everyone that I've ever seen in real life and lifted up is light as a feather, and everyone who's, nobody's ever trying to resell them, okay? And everyone who's posting them is either informing us or bragging, which is cool, because I like bragging about how light this bike is, you can also get their fork when it was available, if ever again, in a 20 millimeter front dropout on, you know, to go along with the bike. But they were saying that on the internet, on Facebook, I saw someone said they built a complete 29er that came in at 19 pounds. So uh, let's give it up for that. And the thing is just a beauty. I, w I would love to just own one. Manufactured bike, there is GT. They're still putting out, I think, three or four different types of uh, bikes in the 26, 29 category. They're always gonna be a staple of dependency. They're in the middle of the moderately priced bikes. Uh, sometimes they have some really great color themes out there. They ride solid. Um, I find that, it's not, I find, I've noticed some of the taller guys like them. They must have like the correct stretch to them. And uh, with every bike that I'm talking about, you're gonna be wondering or having to look up for yourself because I don't wanna bore us here, but like, is it an American bottom bracket? Is it a Euro bottom bracket? I think there's even some mids out there in effect that are based off of freestyle bikes. So you're, you know, you're gonna wanna double check all these things because maybe your aftermarket parts are particular to your own self. Is the headset integrated? Is the headset tapered? And so on and so forth. And what kind of cups you're going to need or not need, bearings, etc. Stem spacers, if at all, depending on what you get. Cable guides, you know? Do you want your little metal things where you can stick your cable through? Or do you want to be shoving it inside the frame, and letting it come back out at the other end? So that's stuff that you can Google on your own and read about. If any of you can't read, feel free to come up to me to ride and I will read for you. Past GT, we have Mr. GT, uh, Gary Turner, made by his son Craig Turner. I actually had the privilege of interviewing them. You can catch that on uh, my playlist, Race BMX Show on YouTube. Um, this guy works with Chromali. He has variations. He's done, you know, standard smooth solid frames he's done frames with lightning bolts in them he's done forks he's put out collabs with gt the factory he's made some of the other companies bikes um staple of show bikes uh as well as being a solid rider don't forget you know no matter what you're riding though it's still going to come down to that drivetrain what are your hubs what are your cranks you know what are your bearings but this bike is uh, renowned in Southern California and in the bike competition category. Racing. Racing is also Kuahara. And they're also Cook Brothers. They uh, have a Kuahara on the way, aluminum manufactured, 10 millimeter parts. Uh, the Racing itself, I have one behind me, my signature race BMX show bike. Uh, also aluminum, these are 20 millimeter dropouts. Now this is something we're not used to yet and you're gonna need adapters if you're gonna be running normal hubs and you're gonna need to be able to get your hands on some mythical 20 millimeter chain tensioners in order to make them work. But it's a great bike and uh, it's the second time I got the feeling I got when I found my very first PK Ripper, like this is the bike I always wanted when I was a kid. Uh, but those are three different manufactured bikes, all aluminum, that are coming out. Oh, the Cook Brothers might be chromoly, so don't quote me on that. Mongoose. Okay, they seemed like they were going to be back. They were all over Instagram like a year ago. and uh, But I like the way the bike looks. Um, you can get it on Amazon. 
So if you live in a rural area and you're not ready to be committing to some of these more expensive bikes, this might be a quickest, easiest way to just get one shipped to your house. And if you like it, you can have some parts shipped in as well. They have an aluminum and a chrome molly. And in the same way that the original GT and soon on this list, you know, Redline and SE, they're just staples of our world. Um, I've noticed over time, we all start out on the bike of our childhood dreams and then some people head towards show bikes. Some people, uh, like myself, start fantasizing about performance, like I'm some kind of race car. So, you know, take all that into account as well. Evil alloy. At a mark, rider turned part maker, turned frame maker, also runs the uh, 24, 26, 29 BMX bike page, big contributor to the BMX world. He's got a very, he's really into detail. So he has this bike, it's a super awesome. Um, the geometry is not like all the others. Most of the bikes that I'm telling you about here, with the exception of Bassett, are all within one, one half inch of, like a half an inch and less of all the little different geometries back and forth and stuff. So that's something you might want to look up. Uh, I'm not going to get caught up in that right now. But this bike is like a 29 inch track bike. It looks like it's a 26, the evil alloy. And then with his logos and style, you get a very heavy metal, punk rock, Southern California bike uh, from a friend, from a rider. Haro. They've got five or six manufactured bikes in the 2629 category out there in both chromoly and in uh, aluminum, okay? Yeah, they've even got like a Radical Rick out there for those of you that are older, like, which I think that this Thunderworm character troll internet guy that showed up some rides is actually pseudo ripoff of. That's also my chromoly King's uh, poster I got from Cheech. It's a Subway Series poster with a slamming hot woman in it um yeah so and bob i actually don't know who is what with haro and bob haro but bob does collabs with haro and he goes out to some rides occasionally in the lower southern california area so haro like gt like sc like redline uh i'd like to include ray stink in there um these are just staple brands of bmx you know um, Bassett. This is another Southern California staple of show bikes. Some of the most luxurious cadillac -y bikes out there. They've got three different styles in the 29-26 category. The Swooper being the most, like, dynamic uh, compared to all their bikes as far as geometry is going and shape-wise. Uh, not to mention, I'm going to have two more lists of these. It was way longer than I anticipated. And there's bikes in there, you know, in those torquer categories and double tubes and uh, even West Side from 4130 Subway Series, not even. Cheech will be putting out a frame soon, another rider turned manufacturer. But there's a lot of great stuff out there. And Bassett is, you know, it's unexplainable what a beautiful piece of machinery those bikes really are. Johnny True Torch. Literally, we call everybody a legend in this business, but he actually is a welding legend here in Southern California. He himself puts out replica torquers, mongooses, and diamondbacks, and JMCs, all of which I've seen. Like, if you want your childhood bike in giant form, this guy makes it. We're talking diamondback with the diamond. You know, like, it's just a dream come true. He's worked for some of the companies. He works for himself. He's just putting them out there. Uh, the bikes are ending up in, the frames are ending up in shops. It's a really great way to go. He's a Crow Molly man, all right? So, because of his position and contribution to our large world of BMX, he gets a tilt of the hat, an extra tilt. A red line, their manufactured bike. They put out this great uh, 26 square back. It's like a real replica of the old day stuff. A lot of guys like to get the 26s and 29 monocogs, which is really just a one-gear mountain bike and turn them into BMX bikes, which is respectful enough, you know what I mean? Then there's SE. Uh, they didn't start the ride scene, but they started the big bike part of the ride scene, that is for sure, and helped push it to another level. Uh, Todd himself was actually out there back in the day with Mayer uh, when these guys were still riding little bikes. They have the 
Ripper, they've got the Flyer, then they've got the Monsters, they've got the Monster Rippers, the Monster Quads, they've really taken big bikes to a whole new level, they've updated geometry in the last few years, so it's never going to be my 2009 <laughs> childhood, but that's living in the past, right? Like, I'm the guy who always wants a faster, lighter bike because I'm a race car, right? Um, Colt, best tires, obviously. Chromoly, SEs are aluminum. Chromoly, uh, dope. Uh, skateboard slash alt rock vibe. Um, they do use a U brake, which is things, that, and they're reasonably priced. Those are things you have to take into consideration as well. I'm a V brake man. I'm not good at adjusting U brakes. My friend Jason, downhill dad, is great with U brakes. So if you have a U brake brake, go talk to downhill dad. He'll fix that up for you. Sorry, Jason. S and M, American made. Uh, Lamb paint jobs, another bike that rides like a rail. Nobody has any problem with this bike. Uh, they were putting out the COVID Cruiser, which was super dope, but like it wasn't BMX enough in my mind, you know, not that I'm the matter at all. But then I saw that Moeller had put up a survey, like, hey, what are you guys looking for in a bigger bike? And now they've got this 29 inch ATF out there. Once again, Chromali rides like a rail. Check your, uh, this might be a company that's Head tubes and bottom brackets uh, vary from some of the more standard ones. I'm not sure I should have looked that up before this video, but I can't stop now. Um, they are also fit. They have a manufactured brand. Fit. Oh, they were also making pounding beer forks for 26s and 29s uh, from S&M. So keep in mind that they, it's a great alternative to a standard fork when you're taking things to the next level. They've got fit. Fit is uh, newer, but you know it fits in with the ones I was talking about before. The GT, Mongoose, Redline, you know, racing for us that are like seven years older than the rest of you. SE, like all the brands of our childhood. Um, so yeah, those two are great. Those are 4130. Uh, Lone Star. I bumped into this guy on Instagram. I haven't met him in real life yet. This is another uh, rider who knew how to weld and just started sticking that metal together and making a super dope bike. Uh, his name is uh, Tyler Thompson. You can hit him up on Instagram and see what he's got going on. This next guy that I'm about to mention, Mike Laird. He is like video game level freestyle champion rider turn welder like a lot of these guys um along with what i said earlier about craig turner uh, right on his website you can see that mike explains double butted and you know all the different like how you know your tubing can be wider on the ends to help the welding and thinner in the middle to save on weight he's very interested in that so that's just a good lesson for anyone if you want to read his website but he's putting out some uh, cro uh chromoly bikes and he's another guy you get your 10 millimeter 20 millimeter option with which is so far only exciting to me and my friend dave uh from the la riders and uh, my brother we're super into it oh and dozer just got into it uh so Oh, but here's the Mike Laird thing. I have no in-personal experience with this, but I love the fact that he's putting out a titanium. You can put in your own geometry as, along with his chromolis and end up with a titanium 26 or 29 inch bike. Uh, it's not an inexpensive frame. It comes in a bit over 2,000, but like a 20 mil titanium frame. I mean, talk about performance. I would... I would be a race car. I would be a race car with a titanium frame in my 20 mil hubs, in my elusive 20 millimeter chain tension. And then the last one for this episode, it's another one of the historical brands. I didn't know as well when we were young, but I keep seeing these super cool bikes out on the scene called Hustlers. And to the best of my understanding, because I couldn't Google it up, there's some uh, Southern California riders, also turned manufacturers, but they're putting out 29s in Chromali right now. Uh, if you can get your hands on one of those, it's another great bike added to the scene. Uh, we've got, you know, a couple more episodes coming up, but I don't want you, anyone to think that their brands aren't being covered. I'm going to be mentioning Sunday and Fairdale all the way through to the Schwinn's and uh, 
you know, the mongoose is that you can get it at Target and Walmart. So, uh, Race Crew Mac Show, we are out of here for now. I am Josh, ride out in Culture Exchange, frame size, episode one.